Hello everybody and welcome back G Bears Off Grid Ways. Look at how calm it is out here. I got got to do laundry today. My dryer wasn't uh throwing my clothes on the ground. <laughs> All right. You see the crows up here, right? Well, I was inside of the shop working and I heard something clang and hit the side of the um the container. I said, what the heck is that up that high? So I came out and I saw the crows up here. And uh, I saw him all of a sudden stick his head in that blue barrel and take a drink. And I said, what the heck is that all about? Well, I looked down on the ground and the cap that I had in that barrel was down on the ground. So that little sucker unscrewed the cap off the top of the barrel and has been drinking water out of the barrel. Isn't that something? So here's a little girl. You notice that her jowls are not as swollen as yesterday. Uh, she stayed home all day today and rested. She had her, her meals, her breakfast and supper, and her lunch cookies. So she's feeling a lot better. I'd put some uh, water in the uh, doghouse for her yesterday and uh, decided to throw a big chunk of ice in there and uh, she I heard her lapping at it so the ice helped the swelling go down so anyway any who anyhow oh I got a sore back today I had to go out late last night and well not late late but uh, usually just about the time I usually have supper I went out to uh, Tony and Angel's place to put the stop on the bottom of their water tank that we set up because they had a water delivery coming in today at 6 a.m. And I wasn't going to go up there at 5 a.m. today to put a, uh, a valve on their water tank. So kind of ridiculous the way it turned out, but that was what happened. Go get my bill. So another thing was, I came out here today and I saw something moving around out there. And I looked and I said, boy, that's moving pretty quick. It was a roadrunner. Haven't seen a roadrunner around here in a while, so there must be a snake around that there. Uh, he wants to get because uh, that's what they eat. So welcome little roadrunner. No big deal. Uh, other than that, I'm missing a couple of dog, a couple of three dogs now, uh, Susie Q and Blackie, and Midnight are all gone today, and they were here for supper last night. So, who knows where they're going? They've got something else on the side going, and what the heck? So look at this. Hey, there ain't no batteries out here, and that's something. So I'll be putting my tools away here in a little while and my solar panel. And uh, but t Tony and Leanne from the channel Doing Redneck Things Off Grid uh, watched my video and says, saw that I was going to have to go to town and buy cable ends and modify these cables and get ready to put the, um, the LifePo 4 batteries in here my lee time batteries and uh he uh texted me and said hey i got a bunch of extra battery cables in around here they're all one aught and uh i said uh, can you use them i'll send them to you so they mailed them off today um he'll probably send me a tracking number uh later tonight or tomorrow and i'll keep an eye as windows come so in the meantime I had to take all four of those batteries that I charged to full charge, and I had them at uh, 13.35, and I reread the instructions and that stuff, and it said on the estimate um, to get a more accurate reading of how much voltage there is, is to add point, 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 to that a number. So that would have put me at... Um, I had 
five, I think, or three, 13.34. So if I add to that, I would be at 13.4 to 13.6, somewhere in there on the, on the full charge. So that's a good thing. So where are the batteries? Well, here they are. So since I didn't have battery cables, I took some number eight and I looped them from uh, in parallel. So all my negatives are connected together and all my positives are connected together. And then I just for the heck of it, I put the beater on there just on the battery side, just so it gives me a state of charge. And as you can see, all four lights are on for 100%. And it says 13.3. Now, what's going on right now is these bat batteries are equalizing. So I actually have to use my um, voltmeter to check for the most accurate number because this one only goes to one decimal point. So my voltmeter says that I have 13.6 in these batteries. So they're all fully charged. What's going on now by tying them in, par in parallel like this, that's all the positives connected and all the negatives connected, is uh, they're synchronizing and equalizing. So if one has a cell that's a little higher than the other one, the BMS, which is your battery management system, which is a computer built right inside the battery, um, there's one in each battery here. And what they're doing is they're all talking to each other right now and saying, okay, so we're hooked up in parallel. We're going to be at 12 volts, 920 amp hours. So let's set ourselves up so that we're all on the same page. And I don't know if they actually talk like that, but that's basically what they're doing. <laughs> anyway, that's, uh, that's the deal right here. So it'll be, they just mailed them this morning, so it could be, uh, more towards the weekend before I see those battery cables here and uh, that's when I'll be um, pulling batteries around inside the uh, battery room moving things around in there and I'm going to tomorrow I'm going to start cleaning the bottom shelf off as you walk straight in I've got an old uh, two-stroke um, generator in there and some old uh, battery parts and things like that. So I'm going to pull all that stuff out of there and clean the shelves off. So the four big batteries that I have in there will move from where they are onto the lower shelf and uh, off to the, when you're walking straight in, you'll, they'll be on the straight in area and still hooked up until all my cables get there. But that'll give me the ability to build the rack I want to build, or it's just a little shelf That'll raise these things up just about, one again, the height of the battery itself as they are right now. And they will be up against the wall this way. So uh, that'll be the wall back here. And that's the way that they, they'll set right just in there on, on the right inside the door. And that will um, clear up a lot of room It'll make my connections easier, and I'll be able to use shorter cables between the batteries and the um, the Ames inverter. So that'll be a good thing. And then I'll be able to use the same cables I have, which are number eight cables coming out of my uh, Midnight Classic, down to these batteries to do the... Uh, regulation. Now one thing that I would would like to do, and I'll probably do it down the line, um, I'll order a couple of bus bars because what I'll be doing is I'll have the, for right now, I'll have the uh, charge controller going from that positive to this negative. And then I'll have the um, inverter going from that positive to this negative. So they're opposites across. So they go through the whole uh, group of batteries as one giant 12 volt battery rather than 
if I just connected it there, it would just use that battery and then wait for these to refill it. I don't want to do that. But what I'd like to do is get a bus bar and then to put shorter cables going uh, one, two, three, four out to the bus bar. And then here, one, two, three, four out to the bus bar. And then on one side of the bus bars, I'll have my uh, inverter. And on the other side of the bus bars, I'll have my charge controller. So everything gets an equal amount of uh, feed and draw. So that's the plan, and I'm sticking to it. Um, thank you for joining me. This is G-Bear, signing off.